everyone. Um, I want to start today by welcoming you back from spring break. Um, so today we are starting with our continuing with our study of gases by learning the combined gas law. And we left off on purpose um, just before this point because the combined gas law is a great way to review Boyle, Charles, and Gay Lasseau's law because it combines them all. So um, we start by reviewing the three laws that we already know. The first one is Boyle's law. And if you recall, Boyle's law is P1V1 equals P2V2. Remember also Boyle's law, um, the pressure and the volume can be any units as long as you're consistent. So remember pressure units include things like ATM, atmospheres, or millimeters of mercury, or pascals or kilopascals. And volume can be in things like liters or milliliters, ml, or um, centimeters cubed or a cc. Those are all things that they could be. So any of those units are fine as long as they're consistent at the beginning and the end of the um, equation. The second law that we have is Charles' law. There's Charles. And uh, Charles' law, if you recall, has a lot to do with balloons. And remember that a balloon expands as you increase, um, like it has the ability to expand, which means that our volume is increasing. So this is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And the reason I say that is just because um, it's, it's hard always to remember that Charles' law is the volume law, okay? And then the last law we have is gay Lasseau's law. And of course, in gay Lasseau's law, um, we're looking at pressure and temperature. So P1 over T1 equals P2 over V2. And remember that when the laws look like Boyle's law, um, like this, where there's a pressure and a volume in the same, these are inversely proportional, meaning that as the pressure goes up, the volume goes down, and that makes sense. As you push on something, you're gonna compact it down. Um, where Charles' law and gay Lasseau's law are telling us that as the temperature goes up, the volume also rises, or as the temperature goes up, the pressure also rises. Um, and so um, gay Lasseau's law and Charles' law are directly proportional, where Boyle's law is inversely proportional. So now to the point of what we're doing, we can combine these three laws into one bigger law. And so what we do is we start with um, the common things. Uh, we see that pressure and volume um, can stay on the top of the law. And temperature, we always divide by temperature. So temperature goes down to the bottom. I'm just gonna go back and show you. So we have pressure and volume are gonna stay on top and then we're going to put temperature, which is always the, in the denominator, we're going to put that on the bottom for our combined law. So our combined gas law looks like P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. So we have um, a law here that allows us to look at um, all of the different variables all at once. Oops, wrong one. So we have pressure one, volume one, and temperature one, P1, V1 over T1 equals the other set of conditions, P2, V2 over T2. And so as a reminder, our pressures for our units for pressure can be ATM mmhg or kpa those are all perfectly acceptable pressure um, units for volume we're going to be in liters or milliliters and for temperature remember temperature we must be in kelvin so that's degrees celsius plus 273 to get us into Kelvin. So um, this is just sort of looking at the, the unit. Um, the nice thing is that if you only know the combined gas law and you only use the combined gas law, when you read in a problem that the temperature is held constant, you can block out the temperature. And what you should see is that what you have left is Boyle's law. After you have held the temperature constant, if you see in a problem that the pressure is instead held constant, 
if you remove the pressure from this, you have V over T. So you're back to Charles law. And then of course, finally, if you uh, hold the volume constant, you get rid of the volume, you would have P over T, which brings you back to gay lissot's law. So in that way, you're able to see the different versions of the different laws. They're all combined in the combined gas law, which is nice because then what you can do is you can actually use the combat combined gas law to solve for any of the three initial laws that we learned, Boyle, Charles, or gay lissot You can actually use a variation on the combined gas law to solve for those instead. So what we're going to do now um, that's what this last thing means, sorry, that you can solve for any of those. Anything that's held constant simply gets canceled out of the equation, which will return you to Boyle, to Charles, or to gay Lasso's law, um, depending on what you hold constant. So what's left to do now is to practice some of these problems. So we have some, char or some combined gas law problems here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this first problem together. No, uh, yeah, we'll set up the first problem together and then I'm going to have you start working on the second problem and then finally we'll um, go over the second problem together uh, because that one is starting at SDP. So for the first problem, what we're going to do is we're going to start by writing down what we know from the problem as we usually do. Um, so uh, we're going to start by writing the volume of a gas is two, sorry, 27.5 milliliters. So that is V1, 27.5 milliliters at 22 degrees Celsius, T1, 22 degrees Celsius. And remember when we're in degrees Celsius, we in immediately add 273 to get us to our um, temperature. So we're going to add plus 273 which is 295 Kelvin. And then uh, our uh, pressure one is 0.974 ATM. So P1 equals 0 0.974 ATM. So that's the first part of our problem. In the second part, as we keep reading, we get what will the volume be? So now we know that we're trying to find V2 Okay, V2 is what we're trying to find in the problem um, at 15 degrees Celsius. So T2 equals 15 degrees Celsius. And once again, we're going to add our 273 to that. So that's 288, 273, right? 58, yeah, 288 Kelvin. and a pressure of 0.993 ATM. So we have all of our initial amounts here. And when we see so many things filled in, no, nothing's held constant. No, um, sorry, this is our first temperature. Um, no, nothing's held constant. Everything is varying. We know that we need to use the combined gas law. Um, and so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set into P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. So this is my given and my find. Remember, we're going to use the five-step method. This is my use. Now we're going to plug in. And what we get out of this is we're going to start with pressure one, so zero 0 0.974 ATM times V1, 27.5 milliliters. Remember, any unit for um, volume is okay, so milliliters we can leave. Divided by T1, which we solved for 295 Kelvin, equals, and so we know that we are finding uh, V2, so we have P2, 0 0.993 ATM, we have V2, and we're dividing that by T2, which is 288 Kelvin. And then this is why I was grabbing my calculator a second ago. Uh, what we need to do now is we need to plug in. So 
our cross multiply in this is a little bit more um, involved. We still line up the diagonal. So everything here gets multiplied together. So I'm going to plug in 0.974 times 27.5 times 288. Um, and then I'm going to divide by everything on the other side. And so what I do is I hit divided by 295, enter, divided by 0.993, enter. And I'm getting a volume two, solve, V2 equals, okay, I'm getting volume two equals 26.33 milliliters. And I want to talk about a few things about that before we go on. So 26. 0.33 milliliters. And what we see here is, first of all, that my volume is relatively similar to my initial volume, which makes me feel good because my temperature didn't change by much and my pressure didn't change by much. So it would alarm me a little bit if my volume changed by a whole lot. Okay, I want my volume to be, you know, kind of in the same genre. And then the other thing that we know is that my unit of volume to begin with is my unit of volume at the end. So I know that it's in milliliters. So I know those two things. Um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to stop here and we're going to pick up the second problem tomorrow in class uh, because I want to go over how to solve that one with you. So I will see you guys tomorrow to solve that second problem.